This is a Nordhaven 68 NFB and I am very, very excited to be bringing you this. It is absolutely magnificent. You're really going to want to see all of this because there's so much to show you, so much detail. It's just an absolutely incredible machine. Now, the thing to tell you about this one is the fact that this has been built. It's brand spanking new and it's actually being commissioned at the minute. So you'll see bits of wrapping about the place and things that aren't quite finished. But it's been built for a, uh, an existing Nordhaven owner who's upgrading and it's being operated just by the owner and his wife. So no crew on this one and it's set up very much with that in mind. They know exactly what they want from the boat and Nordhaven have built it for them. So we're going to go on board, give you guys the full tour. This is absolutely fantastic. Sideboarding access here, as you can see, and you'll notice, in fact, even from very low down, you can step up and onto it. But from a pontoon, of course, it's just straight across. I'll show you the bathing platform just quickly. There's a few things still being done. For example, this ladder here fits onto there and that'll be up like that and then roll into the water. So you'll see little bits and pieces like that as we go around. It's 99.9% .9 ready, but not quite 100% yet. Shower is down underneath there. And then we'll take a quick look at the cockpit and then head on inside. So you've got this great seating area around the back. There's a leaf here you can see that folds up to make that larger. So you can obviously put director's chairs around this side. These we will see the other side of shortly and that'll make the purpose of these much clearer. We've got a wet bar over here. So you've got griddle underneath that one. And then there's a fridge in the center there. And of course the sink, as you can see, is just here. This one's got asymmetric layout. So what you have here is a side deck on this side but none on the other side, and that makes this area much wider. We'll go into that in just a moment. Now, that is owner specification again. If you want side decks on both sides, you can have them. This is what this owner has chosen to go for. Now, just while we're in this area, I will just show you this as well, because this is a wing station. That's so that you can actually control the entire boat from here. Rudder, engine, bow and stern thrusters. It means that when you're stern to berthing, you can be down here and have complete control. But let's start on the inside because we're going to see more of those and a lot more deck areas coming up very shortly. So we'll step in through here. Now this is what I mean about how much space you get by losing the side deck on this side because of course normally if you had the side deck here this whole wall or bulkhead or call it what you will would move in to about here and shrink this area. But with that out to the edge well you've just got acres and acres of space. Now you're going to see little things like these, they're wall lights that are going to go on here, they're owner specification, he's supplying those, they're not here yet and that's why we've got the wiring. So as I say, please forgive little items like that, it is being commissioned and it is due to go to its owner very shortly. Now very much Nordhaven thing, these are built of course as you probably know if you've been on the channel for a while for proper offshore use, so you've got things like these handrails in the ceiling all the way along so you can move around the boat even when it's rough very comfortably. There's mostly storage around here. There's a high-low TV that raises out of the center. There's a wine cooler down here, but most of the rest of these are all storage. And then you've got these. I really love these chairs. Look at these chairs. They're absolutely gorgeous. I need some of those at home. And in fact, there's so much detailing gone into this, and you can see it straight away. This table if we have a little look underneath, you can see the mechanism for this is quite complex. The idea of this is that you can slide this table out. So if you're dining, you've got much more space around it, of course, particularly for that side there. You can see they're quite tight up against the edge. Or if you're not using it for getting so many people around, then you can move it in. If you just want to sit on this side, make this area much bigger. This again, all owner specification, they've chosen this. There's a little desk area here, which is brilliant for working. So you put your laptop on there, put one of these chairs across. That's a beautiful little area. There's blinds, again, they're still to be fitted, I think, but they're going to come down over these windows. Got the bookshelves, of course, and if we head on forward again, then we've got the galley area. Again, very much a Nordhaven thing, this, because it just makes this into a wonderful living area. You can cook here, you can chat to people here. It's all open plan. It's all fantastic. And here you've got things like the uh, microwave up here, the hob. These are to keep pans or pots safe. So again, if you're out in rough weather, you can still cook. Things aren't shooting off of your, of your hob. You've got the uh, cooker down underneath. You've got a trash compactor here as well. If I give that a little push, that opens like so. 
again, if you're spending a long time out at sea, you need to get rid of your rubbish. That's where you do it. These are interesting. These are escape hatches, and we'll see the other side of those, but they're from the lower deck. So emergency only, obviously, but it does mean you've got extra ways out of the boat. Storage up along here, storage all around here. These are all uh, drawers in places like this, for example, and these are all soft clothes. More storage along here. A lot of cooling on here as well. So if we go down here, there's a pantry, first of all. That's in here, and you can see these all slide out. They bolt into place. But then this is all refrigeration. So fridges, freezers, really big. And there's more because down here, and again, these are all catches on them, so they don't slide open when you're out at sea. You can secure those in place. Now that's access down to the lower deck. We are, of course, going to see that. But I'm going to take you up first of all. We're going to head up this stairway because this is going to take us to the pilot house. So this is where you control the boat from. Really lovely big area. And this is where you start to get an impression of just how serious this machine is. It really is, and I've used this phrase before, but it applies to this probably more than anything else. It is proper little ship stuff. From the vertical wheel to the professional radar to all of these displays across here, it's what you'd expect to find on a commercial machine. And this is designed for serious, serious seagoing. I mean, across the Atlantic stuff, forget across the channel. You can go to America on this. If we look across the top here, we've got the uh, controls for, for example, the water maker, so it can make its own fresh water. We'll see that. Um, the grey water system, the black water system, uh, the fuel valves, and again, we'll see more of that when we go downstairs into the engine room. We've got VHF radio, that's backed up. We've got some of the Furuno equipment up here as well. Um, engine controls for the engines. So there's a main engine and a wing engine. Again, we'll discuss that in more detail when we go downstairs. But this is interesting. This shows you the depth of engineering on here. So this is like a safety panel. This is your fire systems. So you can see if any of your fire systems have gone off their fire suppression uh, that are down in the engineering spaces. But look at these bilge pump systems. Here we've got um, forward and forward high water, mid, mid and high water, engine room, engine room, high water. Now you might wonder about that. The reason they have the two is because you always get a little bit of water in the bottom of boats from time to time and the normal pumps will take that out without having to alert you. But if they can't cope and the high water pump starts running, then it will alarm you. It'll let you know you need to go and check on that. And it's also a higher capacity pump. But then beyond that, these electric pumps, there's also, um, as part of the hydraulics system, there's hydraulic bilge pumps. So you've got major, major capacity for taking water out of the boat if ever it was needed. It's backups on backups with this. And you can see the pump monitoring systems up here as well. So everything has got lights on. You can see exactly what's operating, what's going on with the boat. And you can see the shape of the boat here as well, actually, because you can see that's the water line. And that's how deep the boat is underneath. And the propeller is fully enclosed underneath this. So if you were to run it aground, for example, you wouldn't affect the propeller or the rudder. It's, but it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of boat under the water with this one, for sure. If we look across here, then, this is the... Um, the switch panel so you've got your 24 volt stuff you've got your 12 volt stuff machinery this is all machinery space blower controls here for example a lot of equipment going on there and we'll get in behind one of those there's another bigger panel i want to show you and i'll show you the wiring behind because it's very very impressive and then if we look across here we have got um, autopilot controls there's two of those there's another one over there two completely separate autopilot systems Again, we'll look at that in more detail when we go into the engine room. We've got bow and stern thrusters, and they are hydraulic. We've got engine controls. We've got the uh, stabilization controls. So she's got ABT track stabilizers. They run when the boat is underway and also when she's stationary. Wiper controls and so forth. So that's all across there. If we wind on back then a little bit further, you've got side access doors on both sides. Now, these boats are very much custom built and this one the owner has decided because it's not being run with a crew there's normally a cabin at the back here so like a crew cabin for a skipper and what they've done with this one is they've got rid of that that's done a couple of things it's made this area much bigger to give you a larger space up here there's a fridge underneath as well there is a day bed back here so if somebody does want to sleep when they're off watch but stay in the wheelhouse 
than they can do. But what it also does, apart from giving you a load more space, it gives you a load more visibility because you can imagine if that is a cabin, you can't see out the back there. I mean, obviously you can get around that with cameras and so on. But um, this just makes the whole thing a lot more open. There's also a day heads up on this level. So if you slide this door here, that's in there. Now, another very interesting thing about this boat, and this is the first one they built like it, this doesn't have a flybridge. It's standard, these come with a flybridge. This boat is going to Scotland. It's going to be used in the northern latitudes, and the owners with their experience of previous boats just don't use the flybridge. So they decided to delete the flybridge on this one and have this as the primary helm position. So normally there would be stairway that goes up here onto a flybridge. On this one, it simply doesn't exist. Again, it opens this out a bit more and allows space for this desk, for example. And as I say, it's very much owner specification. You have these set up how you want them and how you want to use them, and that's how this owner wants it. Also means you can get hatches up in the ceiling, which you wouldn't normally have, of course. We will have a look up there, actually. If we head out this way, what I'm going to do is take a loop around this upper deck level. So we're out onto the outside of the boat office, as you can see. And if we come around to the back, there is another very nice area up here. Lovely place to sit with a tremendous view right out across the water. That's fantastic. You've got the shade of the overhang. Really, really nice. And then there's a ladder here, so you can get up through here. I'll give you a quick look. So this is up above. This is where your flybridge would be if you went for the standard flybridge option. It's a pretty big area, actually. And what the idea of this is, you've got a hatchway up so that you can get to the mast. This is things like the radars are up here. There's twin radars on this one. Everything's backed up and backed up. Satellite system up on the top. That's the exhaust. It's a dry exhaust system. So the exhaust comes up and out the top. So the noise is taken away from you and the fumes are taken away from you. So that's a, a good system. Again, we'll see more about that when we go down into the engine room. Let's carry on round. We're at Hamble Point at the minute, which is the home of Nordhaven Europe. And if we head up this side, Again, we're going back past the pilot house. These are opening windows here. Actually, another thing I didn't show you. I wonder if this one's unlocked. Yes, it is. Good. This is back into the wheelhouse, but you've also got here these which slide across. They're basically bug screens. So you can have this open if you're somewhere really hot with a lot of bugs and gnats and that kind of stuff, mosquitoes or whatever, then you can have the doors open and those closed off. You can also half open these doors. They're split here, so you can have just the top open if you want to. Let's head on again. Wing stations are here, so when you're manoeuvring the boat, if you're coming alongside, for example, here, perfect example, then you open this up and you have full control over the engine, the bow and the stern thrusters, even the rudder can be controlled from here via the autopilot. That's what that little fellow there is. And another very neat touch, you'll see these about the place. This is part of the ventilation system. So there is a fresh air ventilation system and these are the intakes. You'll see them dotted around. This one is for the port cabin. These can, in fact, be closed off. So if you're into some really, really mega seas, and they would need to be really mega seas, you want to make sure you don't get any water into a ventilation system, you can close those off. Very extreme condition before you need to do that. But nonetheless, it is there. And that is very much the Nordhaven way. If I open this, which you can take two hands, there's a load of storage for deck gear up inside here. If we look onto the other side, again, more storage here, another wing station and more of those vents for different areas. So again, you can control the boat from there and look down that side if you're berthing on that side. And if we head on forward, this cantilever is open. You can see the mechanism for it there. So that literally just swings around and drops into the place here. And this takes us up to the boat deck. Huge area up here. You can get a five metre tender on here and you can see the crane for lifting that on and off. And of course, because it's such a big area, you could put a tender on one side and maybe a smaller boat on that side. Maybe you want to have a sailing boat there or a jet ski or whatever you want. It's a massive area. There we go, you can see that better here. If we head right on up to the bow, again, you can see these ventilation systems dotted around the place or the intakes for them. And then right up to the bow, massive, massive anchor up there on the front. I think I'm right in saying 150 kilograms. And I think I'm also right in saying 130 meters of chain. Absolutely incredible. It's a hydraulic anchor winch. It's not electric. It's part of the hydraulic systems for the boat. And you've got a huge anchor chain locker down underneath here for all that chain. Very, very substantial bit of kit that is. Amazing. It's come right up to the bow, in fact. So a little walk onto here and spin on round. 
Look at that. Can I say little ship again? Of course I can, because that's what this is. Absolutely incredible. Okay, I'm going to show you more of the interior now. So we'll head back down this way. Now there is a route from here back down to the side deck and this is the way that we're going to go so I'm going to show you this first of all this is a side access you might think well that's an odd place to have side access the reason for that is of course because having lowered your tender in here you need to be able to get to it so there's a ladder that goes down there and you can get down to your tender and then obviously bring it around to the stern for your guests to get on and so on if we wander down here this brings us down to the side deck there's another side boarding door just on the side just there but what we're going to do is we're going to go back inside. So we've got a side door here, takes us back into the galley area. And this time, we're going to head down to the lower deck and the accommodation. So this we've seen, it's the saloon, that's where we came in, that's the steps up to the pilot house. And then we'll move across to here. Day heads on this level, so each level's got a heads on it. That's in there like so. It's all our money but still being commissioned they've even still got things like these on so just protecting everything make sure it's absolutely perfect for the owner. Okay let's head on down a little bit further. Now this is the main control panel so what we've got here is switch gear for the uh, 24 volt stuff these are all on circuit breakers the 230 volt stuff is here We've got um, inverter controls, all that kind of stuff. In fact, up above it as well, generators. There's two generators on the boat. There's an engine room generator and a lazarette generator. That one's 26 kilowatt. That one is 16 kilowatt. Um, that's inverter control just there. And then again, you can see the controls for the generators and so forth and shore power and all that across the top. But I'm going to show you inside of here. This is worth seeing. I can remember how to open this. Here we go. because this gives you an indication of the detailing that goes inside these. Look at this, how well you can see that. In fact, what I'm going to do is light it up with my torch on my phone. There we go, look at that. So you can get to absolutely everything, all the wiring, all the switch gear, all of that. The lower one opens as well, and that is very much a Nordhaven thing, the ability to get behind the scenes, to keep the boat running, to make sure that you can deal with any situation. Because if you're in the middle of the Atlantic, <laughs> it's no good calling up your friend the engineer. He ain't there. There we go. Let's close that one back over. Okay, this time we're going to go through this door because this is the owner's cabin. Really lovely size, really well lit because you've got the big windows on either side but you've also got these hatches because the boat deck is directly above us here. Opening windows so you can get plenty of ventilation in through here. These also, you can see these little chaps here, these are for storm shutters. Again it's all part of that serious offshore capability. I'll show you as well while we're here, it's got two separate systems, that's air conditioning and that's diesel fired central heating. So rather than just having air conditioning doing everything, because some of these are reverse cycle, this has a completely separate heating system. And then separate to that again, the ventilation system. So you can run fans through it as well to keep the fresh air coming through and that's those intakes that we saw on the outside. If I pull that across there, then you can see there is a mountain of storage about the place. Here, these big drawers and places like this. That's the old dovetail proper woodworking on this. It's all the real deal. This is teak on here, so it's the standard finish on these. All very nice and solid, all very much in keeping. And again, you can see the lights are still going to be fitted because they're being supplied by the owner. If we come around here, all a whole load of storage. I won't open it all, but just to give you an idea, these are cedar lined lockers. And I mentioned that aspect of being able to get to everything. If you look in here, this is a perfect example. These are panels that you can very easily remove. And then you can get to things like the plumbing, the air conditioning systems, all that kind of stuff. These are cedar lined, by the way. It keeps the bugs away, apparently. You can see there, perfect example. And even down to places like this. Very much the Nordhaven way, that. Let's come right round and show you this side. Again, more lockers, more drawers. Won't open them all, but just to give you an idea, exactly the same sort of deal there. Little dressing area, just 
just a ton of storage. And there's an emergency escape hatch ladder in there to get you out so you've got another route out of this area if you need it. You'll see a few of those as we go around. Let's come back over here. This is the ensuite to this cabin. You've got the two sinks in here. I like the way they put the mirrors on the ceiling so you get, it just makes this whole area just feel much bigger actually. That's what that does. I mean, it's big enough anyway, but that just increases it even further. If we come across here, a massive shower in there. In fact, I'm gonna show you these as well. These are storm shutters. These little chaps here can come down across there and, uh, and give you more protection. Again, only if necessary if you're into some really extreme conditions. But if you're talking about a boat that'll go anywhere, it needs to be able to deal with that. And then through here, that is the toilet that is separate, obviously, off from here. Now, there's another really interesting thing to show you in here, because if we have a look underneath here, this takes us down to the forward bilge. I'm being super careful because I know this one's going out to its owner very shortly. Okay, let's drop right down into here. And now what we've got in here is things like access to the bow thruster, 50 horsepower bow thruster on here. I've had boats with smaller main engines than that. Pump systems in here. You can see how the water flow is marked on all of these so you can see exactly how everything works. There's fire extinguishing systems in here as well but it is all incredibly get outable. The way that all these all your seacocks are here they're all labelled and another thing you have you can see some of the water systems here so this has got um, a polishing system for the water so what you can do with this apart from the fact it can make its own water you can also have your uh, fresh water in its tank and you can bring it out of the tank through a polishing system that cleans and purifies it and back into the tank again so you can keep your water all properly purified it will go through filter systems and all that kind of stuff so that again very much a Nordhaven thing the way you can get into here get to everything and it just means as I say wherever you are in the world if you've got a problem you can get to it engineers can get to it it's not a case of, well, we know what the problem is, but we can't possibly reach it. You can with this. So back out through here. Drop that one back down. There we go. Loads more still to see. Big drawers underneath the bed. And then we'll come back out through here. This is where we came in. That's the stairway back up to the main saloon. This is the stairway down to the lower deck. So that um, owner's cabin is on like a half deck. So it's halfway between the main deck and the lower deck. The lower deck is down here. And the first thing we find is this, which is a basically a utility area. It's mostly storage in here. So again, for all extra food and supplies and all that kind of stuff, that can all live in there. But also what's in here is the laundry. So we've got the big Miele washing machine and we've got the dryer then down underneath. These of course slide away in exactly the same way. There we go. Again, if we look under the floor, it's all about access. Let's lift this one up for a little bit easier. So, it's taking you down to bilge pumping systems, wiring, plumbing, all that kind of stuff. All very easy to reach. Let's see what's underneath here. Ah, just a bit of storage on that one as it happens. <laughs> awesome. Let's press on back a bit further. More cabins to show you. This one is the VIP guest cabin. So you've got double bed in here. And we come around onto this side. Huge.
huge hanging locker there, again, all cedar lined. And again, there's access traps everywhere. You can see them here, you can see them down here. So look in this one. That one is one of the ship's stabilizers. So that gives you access to the back of that. Obviously there's one of those on each side. Very nice. And if we look over here, I mentioned those traps up in the galley and said those are escape hatches from the lower deck. This is where they're from. If you pull that tab there, that opens up and a ladder comes down and you're straight up and straight out of here. So pretty much wherever you are on the boat, there's plenty of ways to get out. It's all stuff that you are almost certainly never going to need, but it is very reassuring to know that it's there. And again, it just shows the depth of engineering that they go to with these. This is the ensuite for this one. The owner wanted a, um, a hip bath, which is why it's got this small bath in here. I think I'm right in saying standard is just a walk-in shower. And that's another of those storm shutters that goes on the portholes. So it's not been put away yet, but that's what that is. That's what they do. And if we spin on round, got the sink, more storage, a little way in the mirror. Nice, huh? Press on a bit further again you've got your air conditioning controls so they're separate for each cabin so you can control your own temperature same with the heating same with the ventilation and light switches here the other thing you'll see dotted around the place actually you can see it here you'll see these little red lights so you can see it on the stair there you can see it down here it means that at night you can light up the boat with those and it doesn't spoil your night vision so if you come down here to get something you're not losing your night vision because you've got the bright lights on you just have that low level red glow Okay, we're going to head on aft. That's an exciting bit to show you. We'll show you that in just a minute, but there's one more cabin to see first of all. That's in here. And that is cabin three. So double bed in here. Again, there's options in here. You can have a bed that goes across. You've got crossways beds. It depends how you want to use it, whether it's for kids, whether it's for adults, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, illuminated locker there. Oh, smell lovely. I wish you could smell those. It's the cedar. It's fantastic. And if we spin on round, this one has its own ensuite tucked away in here. Very nice size. And again, with its own escape hatch. There we go. So pull that tab, that comes down, ladder comes down, you're straight up and straight into the saloon. And from there, you're right next to a door, straight out of the accommodation. And again, loads of storage about the place here, here, here. I won't open it all because it'll be an hour long video if we did. Not be that far off that anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Remarkable. Okay, it's just so much detail with these, it's fabulous. And this then, well, you know what's coming now, don't you? Little clue? Oh yes, this is the engine room. Here we go. Now this is key to this boat and to these boats generally. The fact that you've got a big, heavy duty, low revving, unstressed central main engine. And the whole point of these is the fact that if you run a boat at displacement speeds, so a hull will have a, a natural maximum speed that it'll reach very easily. And then after that, you've got to shovel a whole load of power in. But if you keep your speed down, then you get tremendous, tremendous range. And on this boat, this particular engine, it is a 400 horsepower engine. And it'll give the boat just over 10 knots. But in actual fact, what you do with it is you cruise it at eight, keep it within its displacement speed. And then it's using, I think I was told something like 25 liters an hour. It really zips the fuel. And that's what gives you a three and a half thousand mile range. It's absolutely epic. So that is really the most economical way to run a boat, just a big, heavy duty single diesel engine. That's continuously rated. You could run at a 400 horsepower at maximum revs, which is 1900 RPM, and it'll run like that continuously, but you never would, because of course it's uh, quite a thirsty way to run it. So you drop the revs back, drop it up to about 1200, it's about eight knots, and away you go. Now, of course, the only problem with a single engine is the situation of backup. If that engine were to stop for any reason, then uh, you know, you've got a problem. Well, that's why they fit a wing engine. So over here, there is a completely, completely separate engine. So separate engine, separate controls, separate fuel tanks, separate electrics, starting, all of that. That is a John Deere 135 horsepower engine. It's not as fast with that engine, but it'll still do sort of five to six knots. And that's you get your home. 
So if all else fails, if you had a problem with the main engine, you couldn't put it right, that is how you would sort yourself out and get yourself home. Now these have got a dry exhaust system. What that means is they're not pulling any raw water in from the sea. On most boats, what they do is they have a, a seacock in the hull, it pulls water up, goes through a heat exchanger, and that cools the fresh water in the engine. What they do with these is they have what they call a keel cooler. That means there's like a radiator on a car built into the keel. No water needs to come out or in. That cools the, uh, the, the cooling water, the fresh water in the engine, and everything stays inside the boat. There's no raw water needed at all. You've got um, your workbench here, tool storage is here, little sink is here, you've got engine controls here so you can run the engine from down here and check everything from down here. The other thing that you've got, there's three fuel tanks on this boat and they all have sight gauges, you can see them here. So of course you've got fuel gauges, but if you want to be absolutely certain what your fuel situation is, you can come down here and you can see exactly how much fuel you've got. Now the detailing of the engineering even goes to such things as if somehow that was to get broken and <laughs> it's hard to know how because you've got this protective thing on the outside before you even get to that. So there are these cocks on it, one here and one down here, that isolate it. So even if that was broken, you wouldn't drain the fuel out of the tank. So if you want to check the levels, what you have to do is just release that one there with your foot and then it lets the fuel in, you measure it and away you go. But other than that, those are kept separate. As I say, three tanks. So you've got a main tank and then two big auxiliary tanks. This is again part of the commissioning system. They go the wiring and plumbing diagram up on the wall there. That's obviously not normally there. Um, but this here is your fuel changeover, your transfers. So you can take the fuel between the tanks. You can see here the port tank, the forward tank, transfer pump, all that kind of stuff. But also here, a polishing system. What that means is it runs the fuel through a system. I think they normally use a, a, um, a centrifuge that spins the fuel at really high speed, pulls the impurities out of it, and then sends it back into the tank. So you can take all of the impurities out of, of your fuel system. Filters are here as well, of course. And you can see they're all the way around. And again, you can, can transfer between those. Like so, that's part of the ventilation system for the boat. It's very, very comprehensive. Generator here, that's the main generator. If we come back down here, you will see that um, wing engine in a little bit more detail. There we go. And also down here, you've got um, the hydraulic systems. So this is running all of your stuff like the bow and the stern thrusters. The stern thruster on this is 38 horsepower, so 50 horsepower bow, 38 stern. Um, what else does this run? It runs your anchor winch, it runs your stabilizers all that kind of stuff. So really serious hydraulic system. And in fact, it's worth mentioning that the only problem sometimes with hydraulic systems is that they run off the main engine. And if your main engine's down at tick over speed, you haven't got as much hydraulic power as if you're running at high speed, which of course is a bit of an issue because at low speed when you're maneuvering, you want to keep the revs down. With this one, there's a separate power takeoff. You can run it off of your, uh, your wing engine and that means you can keep your revs up on your wing engine. You can have maximum hydraulics and still keep the speed down on your main engine. This is giving us access to the uh, shaft you can see going out there and the back of the engine, the gearbox, all that kind of stuff, all accessed down through here. And the other thing to mention actually is if you look in the ceiling, you can see that there are traps that you can undo. It is possible to lift this engine using a high ab. So you take it up and it comes out and it comes out through a saloon door. So you can get the engine out. You should never need to, but if you ever did, you can get the engine out without dismantling the boat. Same with that one. I mean, they really do configure these for using anywhere in the world and making sure that obviously part of that is keeping the maintenance up on them. Um, fire suppression systems, these are here. And obviously there's alarms for those to let you know if they ever activate, they're automatic. Uh, hot water system is here. Now this will heat three ways. It'll heat obviously from the engine. When the engine's running, it uses the chlorifier to keep the, uh, your fresh water in your hot water system warm. Also the shore power or your generator will heat that, but there's a third way, which is it'll actually heat via your uh, diesel heating system, completely separate from the engine. So three ways of heating that. That little fellow up there is a camera, so you can keep an eye on this area from the main helm position. And if we come back, this takes us into the lazarette then. So we can come right back through here. Another watertight door you can see here, same as the one where we came in. That ladder there, takes you up to the cockpit. Remember when I came to the cockpit, I said, we'll see the other side of those uh, traps when we come in. Well, the main one is here. So that's so you can put stuff in and out straight from the cockpit. So perhaps you might want to keep diving gear in here or something like that. You don't want to bring it through the whole boat, of course. 
that's how you can drop it straight in. This one here is slightly different because it has these special catches so that even if that's secured from up top, you can still pull those and get out. There's always a way out. If we look over here, we've got the Victron systems. These are inverters and chargers. But even there, there's a small backup charger over there. So even if you had a problem with these, you can still charge your batteries. And talking of batteries, your main battery switches are over here. So these are for your house batteries or your domestic stuff, your engine batteries. But also, you can switch and link them. So, for example, if you ran a whole battery bank flat, a little bit like applying jump leads to a car, you can switch across for another one and link them up. So you could start your engines from your house batteries, or you could link your engine batteries to get your house batteries charged up or whatever. So, again, it's all belt and braces stuff. We come back across here then, another fire extinguishing system separate for this area. And then over here, this is really interesting. This one here, want to guess what these are? These are oil changing systems. You want to change the oil in that generator, you can do it from here. You open the valves, there's a, a motor down here. You put your uh, container in here and you can pump the oil from that generator out you can put fresh oil in here then connect that up reverse the pump pump that back in and that works for all of these motors so the main engine the wing engine the generator that's in here can all have the oil changed from here and again it means that if you're somewhere really remote you need to keep your servicing up you know, an owner could do that you don't need to start trying to find your way in and under that to find a way of draining the oil from it it's absolutely fantastic Okay, round again, this is the other generator, just a slightly smaller generator. One of the nice things about that is, of course, that at night you can shut that generator down and this engine is a, this generator rather is a long way from your accommodation, which is right up there, particularly the owner's cabin, which of course is right forward and up. So it means that with that shut and that shut, it just keeps the noise levels to an absolute minimum. Let's come around here, this is all of the, um, the air conditioning systems. And I mentioned that they were all on separate uh, units, so each area has its own um, air conditioning unit separate. And if we come on back here, this is the steering system. Now this is interesting because when you're out with these boats, you're on autopilot 99% of the time, and there are two autopilots completely separate, not just separate pumps, separate computers, separate head units. You might have noticed up in the um, in the wheelhouse, I pointed out there are two separate autopilot controls, and that means that it, Whatever problem you might have with this one, you've always got a completely independent separate unit to uh, to still operate the autopilot on the boat, which is really important. Now imagine if everything goes down, absolutely everything has failed, you've completely lost all steering. Well, you see there's a little thing there, you can take that plug out, you can put a tiller down through there, attach it to there, you can still steer the boat. Now it's not... <laughs> Not something you'd ever really want to do because it'd be quite heavy and, and, and quite tiresome to do. But again, it's that backups on backups on backups. It means that worst case scenario, you've still got control of the boat, you can still keep going. And that is really, really important. Just absolutely incredible, isn't it? The whole thing is serious, serious engineering. Absolutely fantastic. Cool. Let's come back out of here. Let's come back through the engine room. I should point out, in fact, that when we come down here, there's some steps up here, so I'm crouching slightly at this end, but when I come down here, full standing headroom in here. Even for me, I'm over six foot and no problem to stand up in here. So a really nice area to come down into. There's ventilation in here, so it's forced ventilation, which means you can keep this area cool. And it is an area where you can come down and just keep an eye on stuff and have a wander around, even when the boat's out at sea. That's why it's got these bars around it to protect you. Just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Okay, back into the accommodation. Let's pull that one closed again. Look at the size of that door. It's proper stuff, isn't it? There we go. We'll come back through here, so we've got two cabins on either side, utility area. Let's come back up, I think we're going to head right the way up through here, back up to that wheelhouse, because that is mission control, isn't it? So a last little look at the saloon area, and on up again. Let's sit at the helm. 
And there you go. That is the Nordhaven 68 NFB. Massive thanks, well, firstly to the owner for giving us permission to do this, but also to Nordhaven Europe who organized this tour. That's been really great. I've been so pleased to show you this one. And I think the only thing we can say and sum up is that this really is absolutely classic Nordhaven. Catch you on one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.